Okay, so it is great, it is exciting. Do you hear me in the back to start? Because I have a very low voice. So um, it is very exciting to be here and to have a chance to talk about engaging the people who are not participating in democracy. Um, I call this presentation Building Foundational Skills for Engagement and for Participation in Democracy. And I would like to do that um, using the work of the Right Question Institute as a lens for exploring that. I would like to talk about the notion of building foundational skills, the idea of a new starting point for democratic participation and engagement. Um, we all know that in order to build a vibrant democracy, we cannot skip over building skills. I think that that's part of the mistake that usually is done that um, in order to try to engage people, the efforts are two steps over them. The um, right question strategy is a set of tools, methods, and practices that allow people, no matter their educational or literacy level, lear learn two foundational skills. How to ask their own questions and how to focus on decisions. So now, you may be thinking, those are things that people are supposed to know. That is commonplace language. How can that be that important? Well, it is because these are two skills that are usually skip over building. And the people who need those skills the most, they, are not, they don't know how to use them. What we have seen at the Right Question Institute is that these are two essential skills for thinking and learning and for taking action. Now, where did this come in, is coming from? It is not coming from um, a university or from research, anything like that. What the Right Question pro Project, sorry, that was our old name. What we do comes from lessons by working uh, with low-income communities, from people who are disengaged from the decision-making processes. And for example, years ago, we were working up north in Lawrence here in Massachusetts. And we heard from parents that they were not going to the schools because they didn't even know what questions to ask. And we were very smart. We said, well, if they need to know how to ask questions, so let's give them the questions that we think they should be asking. By doing that, what we did was to build dependency. And all the time that they needed a question, they used to come to us, what do I um, ask when I'm looking for a job? Or when I go to the doctor, what, what are the questions that I should be asking? So they taught us that it was not about giving them the questions, but it was about building the skills so they could ask questions in any situation that they were in. They were on to something also. We told them to use the questions at the school, but they didn't do that. They used to come back and say, oh, I didn't do what you said that I should do. I used the questions when I had my doctor's appointment or, or when I was doing problem solving at home or when I was in the community talking with my neighbors, I used the, the, the questions. So um, what we saw was two things that they had on decision making on how to use these skills, but also that the skills were transferable to many situations and settings. Now, you may be asking, well, it's just about learning to ask questions and focusing on decisions. So what is the connection between that and democracy? How does that connect? So let's look at this chart for one moment. So these are examples of annual participation in traditional forms of democratic action in low-income communities. And I hope that you can see it from the back, but it is very low, the number of people who participate lobbying. Then in letters to the editor is also very low. 
In community organizing, there is a bump, but that is with a lot of effort and you know it. Public hearings goes higher. There is one million of people that uh, demonstrate and mobilize, and then there is voting. And there it goes up around 11 million. Probably the figures are a were a little higher in the last elections. Now let's look at this other chart. So you still have the traditional forms of democratic action, but then there is a new landscape. In the color column, there are the interactions that people have with programs, services, and institutions. And if you look at it, there are about 5 million encounters with the welfare office, around 50, 50 million with Medicaid, schools 16 million, 1 million with food stamps. So what you have here is a chart that shows that there are the traditional forms, but there is a landscape that is being missed. And those are the places where people who are not engaged in democracy, where they are taking some sort of action, if any. I can say that because You could find me at the uh, welfare office as a welfare recipient. You could find me as a parent taking action at the school dealing with my child's needs. No way that you could find me in organizing, in a public hearing, or in a demonstration. So, what I have learned and what we have learned at the Right Question Institute, it is that this is a place where we can start engaging people and preparing them to take action. The places where people deal with programs and services can be training ground to start practicing and using democratic skills. And um, from one participant in uh, one of our sessions, um, we learned that these are the places where also people get disempowered. She said it is at the welfare office where we learn not to participate. Now, these are the places also where a lot of decisions that uh, affect people are being made. So in order to help people start participating at this level, we have developed some tools that they can easily use to um, gain confidence, to be able to impact the decisions. And for that, we have developed what we call the question formulation technique, a very simple step-by-step -step process that allows people to participate in the, in the decisions that affect them. I'm going to step back for one second and call the, this, the places that I just referred to as outposts of democracy. And the reason is because they are connected to decisions being made higher up in the democratic chain. So the question formulation technique, a very simple step-by-step -step process. People learn to produce, improve, and strategize on how to use their questions. Now, knowing how to ask questions is not enough. It is very important also to know how you can be more effective in asking questions. And for that, we develop what we call the framework for accountable decision making. And there, people ask questions about the reasons for the decision, the process for making the decision, and then how they can play a role in the decision making process. For people, it is easier to ask questions about the reasons, a little more difficult to ask questions about process, and more difficult to ask questions about role because usually all their lives or most of their lives, they haven't had a role. So these things need to be taught. Time has to be set aside for building uh, the foundational skills. And what we have seen is that when you teach those two skills, consistently. People, 
There are changes on how people feel about themselves. There are changes on what they know and what they are able to do. You do this without telling them. And probably you have experiences in which you have tried to convince people to do something. And that is very difficult. You have to lead them through a process in which they will get to their own conclusions. And I remember that in a civic engagement uh, project that we have, have had back in 2008, um, I was at an adult education program trying to build the skills of adult learners and engage them in voting. And in the room, there was a, one of the participants was very, very negative about, about voting. And she said, no way that I will vote. She went through the process. And at the end, she said, well, now I see that there is a connection between the decisions being made in my neighborhood, the decisions being made here at the program, the decision about whether I get my welfare grant, and decisions being made at a higher level, but I will still not vote. We returned about two months later to work with a different group. And that day, the teacher had the, the student in the back of the room. The transformation was amazing. Because this time, her name was Brooke, she was talking about how important it was to vote and how ma so many decisions that were being made and that she said that she registered to vote. So, and that is just one example. When you build this skill, three things, three different forms of, of action can take place without you telling people that that's what they should do. People take action individually. And for example, we have the example of a mother resident in a homeless shelter who advocated to get services for her son who was he hearing impaired. Um, people can take action in the aggregate. And what this means is that many people take the same kind of action in, its, in the same place. And in New Hampshire, a group of women in a transition from welfare to work, work program advocated one after one at the welfare office. They were disrespected, insulted by the workers, but they came in with a list of questions and a notebook where they asked the worker to sign beside any, de beside any decision being made. And that changed the culture and the dynamic of the welfare office to the point that a new participant came to the program and at the, she said, something weird happened at the welfare office. The worker asked me, where is your notebook and where do I have to sign? <laughs> Last thing, there is a chance for collective action. And we saw that from a group of Mexican immigrant parents who advocated to change school policies after there was a tragedy at the school. They learned the process, they got together, and even within that group there were people who uh, took action individually in the aggregate and, and parents who work with the school in changing uh, uh, policy. Now, what I, I'm talking about here, even that is simple, is really connected to democracy. Because when people learn to ask questions, they also learn to identify decisions. That is really connected to democracy and to three very important democratic principles. When they ask questions about the reasons, they are asking questions about legit legitimacy. The decisions need to be based on policies, standards, rules that are uh, fairly applied. Process, there should be transparency. The process should be visible to all. And then there should be a role. Opportunities for participation for the individual being affected by the decision. When people are taking action this way, at the level of the individual encounters, we call that micro-democracy. And micro-democracy is different from little democracy, we are aware. <laughs> and this is what it's all about. And I'm about to close. It is about individuals using essential democratic skills to participate in decisions that affect them in their encounters with public institutions. What are those essential skills? How to ask their own questions and how to focus on decisions. If people do that, 
it will go a long way because what you are doing is building capacity, building the, uh, the confidence, building efficiency so they could change decisions at that level. If they have good experiences changing ex decisions at that level, it is more likely that they will attempt to change decisions at higher levels. So that will also make it concrete for them. Last thing before I close, and thinking about from tiers, well, at the Right Question Institute, for many years, we have had this idea of strengthening democracy. And there were times that that was in our vision. And I said, but you know, it seems that that's too big. That is too grandiose to say in our vision. We are doing education, so how is that? You know, people might think that we are not thinking straight. Well, over the years, we have been developing different ways of building people's capacity. And we have got to a point in which there are many people integrating our strategy because we are not asking them to change what they are doing. Just bring this in to build the capacity of people and you will see what you will be able to accomplish. And I'm going to the frontier because right now, one of the places where our strategy is beginning to take root it is at the school. What a place to start building democratic capacity. And it is thanks to our book, Make Just One Change, teach students to ask their own questions. This past week, we received a group of about 40 teachers. And this coming week, we are working with about 62 from all over. The interesting thing is that we put as part of the message that when they are teaching students how to ask their own questions, they are making a contribution to the school, to the student, but that the contribution goes beyond classroom walls, that they are making a contribution to democracy. And they have embraced it. So I'm really excited about having a chance to start building that capacity at that level. Thank you.